The 7 Money Rules All Rich People Follow Are you familiar with the money rules that rich people follow? Actually, these money rules that made them rich are things that we already know but never really focus on. If you want to get rich, then this video is right for you. Hello there! This is The Financial Fortune and in this video, we are going to talk about the 7 money rules all rich people follow. Please don't forget to leave a like, click subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we release new videos. The first money rule is the income ceiling. Go to school, get knowledge, get a solid job, and work on your career. Many people have taken this route in the hopes of attaining financial freedom in the future. You can plainly see that a significant portion of the social and economic landscape of today is centered on the exchange of time for money. Most people agree to give up an hour of their time in exchange for a specific sum of money. This implies that the amount of money a person can earn will always be limited. For instance, if a person is paid $25 per hour, the absolute most that person can earn is $60 per day. This is assuming that person is somehow able to work all 24 hours of the day. If that person works all 7 days of the week without taking any days off, he will make $4,200 per week, $16,000 per month, or $201,600 per year. Of course, this is completely improbable. The truth is that financial freedom comes from separating your time from your money, whether we are paid $20 an hour or $100. You can study your way to freedom, as Tony Robbins famously said. It dawns on you that some of the richest people in the world don't really work for money. They concentrate on developing revenue-generating systems for themselves. Consider entrepreneurs. As you can see, wealthy people place more emphasis on developing systems that will generate income for them than on actually making money. The second money rule is about earning money aside from working at a job. The majority of us were trained to generate money by working at a job. The various methods that people around the world generate money, however, is something that many people never get to understand. The majority of us are aware of earned income. This is the money we earn when we trade our time for money, whether it be through employment or freelance work. Although it's a terrific beginning for many, there are other ways to earn money. When you produce something or sell something for more money than you paid for it, in many instances, you start receiving profit payments, making a transaction make less time than earning money by working hourly. Of course, selling skills are necessary for this. It is easier and faster to generate profitable income as you get better at selling. Many people generate money with their investment income if selling isn't your thing. This might take on several shapes. For instance, a lot of people invest in real estate or the stock market. As stock prices or property values rise, they have the possibility to enhance their investments. This is referred to as income from capital gains. When an item that has increased in value is sold in this situation, the earnings from the sale of assets that have an increase in value are regarded as capital gains. These investments can now offer additional sources of income. Investing participants may receive dividend income. This occurs when a firm you own shares and distributes a portion of its profits to its shareholders. As a result, investors often receive checks every quarter for the company's earnings. If you own a property where people can live, work, or even grow food, this property can bring in rental income. Many people profit from royalty income, which is often derived from creative work or intellectual property such as music, literature, or patents if you rent it out or if you work in the arts. The third money rule is not all taxes are made equally. Have you ever observed that some large firms appear to receive numerous tax breaks that ordinary people do not? This is so that firms and individuals can engage in financial activities that are beneficial to the national economy. Taxes are not all created equal. They can amount to up to 37% of only the federal taxes. Self-employed people now have a little more freedom because they can deduct any business-related expenses as a cost of doing company, which might reduce their taxable income. The biggest tax incentives go to enterprises, corporations, and investors in the form of lower taxes. One of the main reasons they are able to claim these tax breaks is because they carry out the government's mandates such as creating jobs, advancing energy or medical technology, or investing in community-benefiting initiatives like building affordable housing. 
They also know how to make money and how to play the tax system fairly. Naturally, to traverse the complex world of taxes, always be sure to consult a tax professional. Wealthy individuals always pay attention to this vital aspect of finance. Do you find these videos interesting? Comment down below and subscribe to our channel and share this video to your family and friends. Now, let's get back to it. The fourth money rule is debt has the power to either make you or break you. Many individuals are unaware that it is one of the most important instruments. Even some of the wealthiest people in the world borrow money. These individuals use that to leverage assets that they could not now afford with their available funds. For instance, it might take a business five years to save up the cash necessary to purchase the equipment it needs and recruit the staff it needs to start expanding, or it might borrow the cash. In the first case, they are in need and immediately start growing their business. In the second scenario, they will be able to start developing their firm immediately rather than waiting to five years to do so, which may allow them to boost their income more quickly towards the conclusion of the five-year period. Because they are now using debt to build their firm, these company might be earning considerably more money. The person's or company's finances may suffer if the debt is used improperly. Debt becomes a future expense for the person or business if it is used in a way that doesn't lead to growth. Debt is employed to boost the borrower's purchasing power, and if it doesn't provide revenue, it's like taking out a loan from one's future self. This is how bad debt and good debt differ from one another. The entire purpose of the debt is to raise purchasing power. It has no other benefit. Good debt is utilized to boost an organization's ability to invest, leverage larger assets, or promote commercial expansion. The fifth money rule is skills are currency. Recently, businesses like Google, Apple, and Netflix have made a lot of noise about not requiring college degrees for employees. Several of the largest corporations in the world are starting to realize that traditional schooling may no longer be necessary in this rapidly evolving society. Whether a person wants to work in the workforce or launch their own business, it is more crucial than ever to understand what talents are in demand right now and develop them. The ability to advance and make a sizable sum of money depends on their acquiring those in-demand abilities. The sixth money rule is becoming an owner. If you pay attention to how wealth is divided around the world, you must become an owner. You quickly come to the conclusion that individuals who own or control the enterprises or own land are also those who hold the majority of the wealth. This could imply a variety of things. Many people own and manage their own real estate or start their own enterprises. Many people who are not business-minded choose to invest in other people's enterprises, which gives them ownership but not control of the company. This is a fantastic choice. If you buy an iPhone and you don't have Apple shares, we have a problem. Tony Robbins said, You are not an owner but a consumer. To be able to grab a piece of the world's wealth, we must become owners, whether we operate the asset actively or just possess it passively. For individuals who lack an interest in active investing and are not business-minded, since the S&P 500 exclusively invests in the 500 largest U.S. firms, using index funds like these can be a fantastic choice. In this approach, People can passively acquire modest stakes in many of the top U.S. companies while still benefiting from the most crucial aspect of investing, which is the seventh money rule, compounding, which may be slow but are nonetheless powerful. Since the stock market offers returns of 8% to 10% yearly, many people find investing in it as a whole to be thrilling. A $10,000 investment will return between $800 and $1,000 in a year, but if this $1,000 return is put back into the market, it will return $1,100. If we put the additional $1,100 into the market the following year, we will receive $1,210 in return. If we continue to invest our earnings back into our original investment, we will receive a return of $1,331 in the next year. If we maintain this for the following 30 years, your initial $10,000 investment will be worth $174,494. And secondly, your investment now yields $17,449. Your investing fund will have $1,173,908 if you keep doing this for 50 years, giving you a return of $117,390. 
Without any future investments, the $10,000 investment from that year grows to over $1 million in 50 years and yields a six-figure return each year. That is it for the 7 money rules that rich people follow. Don't forget to like and share this video. Click subscribe if you haven't already. This is The Financial Fortune and thank you for watching.